episode of Will's Review. I'm your host, Will D. And today we're going to start off with a little bit of sports. So quick rundown. The Bills are 8-3. and three. The Jets are 0-11. I, I can't believe I'm actually saying that. You, you figure by now they'd win a game, right? Like at least one. Maybe get a tie or something. They, they can do ties in football regular season, right? Like every now and again. You got a, like a overtime, overtime, and then if it's still tied up, the game's over. You know, you can't, Jets can't even pull that off. It's like keep it three three. That's it. Um, and then the Giants. I I also didn't think I'd be saying this. The Giants are winning the NFC East with a four and seven record. What? I know, right? So this Giants team is in the worst division. At the right time. <laughs> like, you know what I'm saying? The only team right now that can really take first place from them is the Eagles. I think they have two games still unplayed and they're three and six. So, you know, they even if they split those, they're they're tied with the Giants right now. Um and I think they have a win over the Giants. The the Redskins have the same record as the Giants, but they took a loss to the Giants, so the Giants will beat them in any tie break right now. It's a uh, it's a really weird division. If the Giants somehow Make the playoffs. I might have to do a whole episode of this show topless. Just because I don't think that this is plausible. How the heck are the Giants going to the playoffs? I, this is... I'm a Giants fan, so I should be excited. I'm really just like, this just... I'm, it hurts my head so much. <laughs> Four and seven. Okay, and they're they're looking like playoff contenders at four and seven. That's ridiculous, unfathomable. Uh, I guess they'll probably be the the playoff team that has to play the wild card with such a terrible record, more than likely, right? Um, and then the other kind of major sports news, I guess, was the Tyson fight. So a lot of people are, you know, they're they're in their grumble, 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 ramble, 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 because like Tyson supposedly looked like he beat Jones, but they gave it a draw because there wasn't a decisive winner. Here's the thing, folks. If you expected anything other than a draw, no matter how good the fight was or got or whatever, yada, yada, here's some things that you maybe weren't aware of going into the fight. Whoever is the commissioner of the state and does the boxing and yada, 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 WBC, blah, blah, blah. Tuesday, he was like, all right, so no knockouts. This can't get too, too competitive. We don't want to see a super intense fight. It has to be exhibition level which means you can display some skills and power, whatever, but can't go hard, which means that for those of you who are like, Tyson was looking good, and then you hear he can't go hard, like, yeah, that's Tyson not going hard. He's a monster. Um, the other thing was like, oh, if there's a major cut, uh, it's an automatic end to the fight. All this, So there were all these rules put in place to like, protect these old guys. It's an exhibition. It's an exhibition, yeah, but it was also for a title. Exactly. Nobody realized that. So this is part of the Legends League, right? It was part of this Legends League that Tyson is kind of helping to promote and produce and stuff like that. And he was putting it for the heavyweight title belt for WBCs, yada, yada, yada. This is a long, you know, every freaking boxing belt is ridiculously long because no promotion is in agreement with another promotion until somebody holds like 50 different belts at the same damn time, right? So... This was technically a title match, an exhibition match. And frankly, if you ballot Mike Tyson versus Junior, like, bro, we want to see a fight. Don't tell me. You can't tell me there's a match that no knockout. Why am I watching boxing for no knockouts? I watch boxing to see somebody get knocked out. I am never more mad then at the end of a boxing match, not even a UFC fight, but a boxing match, if they're both of them are standing, I don't want to see it. I don't care if they're both bloody and bruised and they beat the crap out of each other and you got to see a great fight. I don't want that. I want somebody knocked out on the floor. That's what I want when I watch boxing. They can't kick all fight. They can't grapple. It's not a real fight anyway. You're telling me there are two people trying to punch each other in the head. Somebody needs to hit the floor. Yeah! That's why I don't even watch boxing, because now people are boxing. The same reason people talk crap about Floyd Mother is why he's arguably one of, if not, well, I would, I still can't say myself that he's the best boxer of all time after I've seen some of the stuff Muhammad Ali has done. But he's arguably one of the best boxers of all time, because he's not, it's not fighting, it's boxing. 
So the running around game and not knocking people out, tapping them up and winning the cards, that is the most intelligent strategy there is, and he was the best there ever was to do it. But it's not exciting. It's not why we watch it. It's not why people gamble and stuff. We're not trying to put money on people tiptoeing around the freaking ring. We want to see who's going to knock out who. I'm paying money to see this one knock that one out. So, yeah, I, I don't care. But since I do keep saying knockout, anybody see Nate Robinson get knocked out? I saw Nate Robinson get knocked out. That was a good boom, 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 boom. Bing! Hit him with the uppercut. He dropped. He dropped. That, uh, and I like Nate Robinson. I was a Nate Robinson fan, but damn, son. He had the Knicks shoes on, and he got dropped like he was in the playoffs. <laughs> like, ooh, that was the first that was the first round playoff knockout in the second round of a boxing match. That was that was harsh, man. He was stone cold, no chin knocked out. That was a good Friday knockout. Like you know somebody was about to stand over him and crack a joke before they realized, oh, the cameras. <laughs> that was oh man, that was solid. That was a solid knockout. But that Tyson fight was whack. I'm sorry. <laughs> when everybody left, he was still, still there. Like, <laughs> oh, damn. But, yeah. So that was the other major sports news. I mean, besides that, one thing to, to, to mention is that, you know, Conor McGregor is supposed to be fighting in UFC 257, and he's supposed to be fighting Pacquiao after this. So the next time we'll see McGregor will be in UFC in January um, for 257. Uh, and then... He, I think they'll schedule an official date on the Pacquiao fight, but it's, it's looking like 2021 for McGregor versus Pacquiao, I guess, because he took on Mayweather. He has to take on the guy who was always talked about with Mayweather. So, you know, for fans, I'm sure it's, you know, one of these celebrity matches you want to see. Pacquiao's not exactly in his prime, but when you're on roids, why not? And, uh, you know, McGregor is a ballsy, ballsy man with a lot of swagger who's wants money, whether he wins or lose. And this match will draw that kind of money. So, you know, hopefully that one. Well, and then a knockout, because that's all I want from a damn boxing match is a knockout. All right. On that note, we're going to go to our first commercial break. When we come back, we're going to talk about what's happening in the news. <laughs> The scales can be tipped by one man who has the courage to confront his fate and make a choice that will decide the fate of the world. smoke here today. Wow. But anyway, were you expecting a real superhero? I don't think so. The real life superheroes are the ones that are helping out in their community today. And the LDM show will be there to bring you the events and stories to light. Do you know a real superhero? Let us know. But for now, follow us on Instagram and Twitter and like us on Facebook. Also visit our websites for photos, videos, and updates. But until the meantime, hey, I gotta be out of here. There are a couple of things that are happening. I think most recently, uh, earlier today, it was determined that elementary schools are gonna be going back in December, like December 2nd, something like that. Like, they're getting ready to go back. I mean, okay, here's here's my thing with this, right? We just saw a major spike. You closed down schools because of a major spike. And then you close down the schools, and numbers are starting to go back. I mean, am I the only one who can make sense of that information? Right, just, I mean, I mean okay, so, here, so here's the thing. There's a major issue 
with remote learning that nobody really talks about, and that's the students who don't really have a home, right? With libraries not at you know full capacity, you know a lot of kids who are homeless but ha or you know have whatever access they have to public schools, places that feed them and you know provide different drives for their you know different needs as far as food and clothing, da da da, um, you know. But they also provide internet access for them to go and further their education. You know, uh, they have issues. There are a lot of poor families who are able to put a roof over their head, however they do that, but don't have the internet access. I mean, we have uh, this. You know, De Blasio worked out a deal with Verizon to create five hundred thousand more broadband members. So if you had a weak internet connection, they would upgrade you. Um, if you didn't have one at all, they would provide it to you. That sort of a thing. Uh, but that's only 500,000 people and, and households, not necessarily the, the number of students necessary to, to, to get this, and not to say that all the people getting this would be students. Um, this is a really awkward position, but the fact of the matter is it's somewhat the safest and the healthiest for many more. You know, it's always, it's always sad when the marginal group can't really succeed but this is about everyone's health and if they you know repeat a year of school but they get to live is you know so it's a much better outcome as far as i'm concerned uh because i mean it's we're talking about a public school education here this is already freely provided that they should get it period but it, it should be in a healthy manner that it's acquired so I don't know why they would think about opening up these schools and they need to stick to this remote learning through the winter, if you ask me. Like, if you're going to open up schools again, if you're going to open up schools again, it needs to be when the weather is warm. That's your best bet. Because one strategy that schools were doing at the start of this whole we should open up school things again is that they were rotating classes between inside and outside, right, to reduce numbers actually being congested together. Come winter, ain't nobody taking calculus or, you know, simple, you know, math class in the snow. Ain't nobody doing that. This is New York. This ain't Florida. Ain't nobody going outside. In there. Nah, it's not happening. So you're already going to be cramming all these people together, staggered scheduling and da 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 It wasn't working. If it was, you wouldn't have to be seeing the spikes that you've seen. What kills me is that just before schools open in August, on my podcast, XY101, we talked about this. And I clearly said this is not a good idea, Right? I'm talking about it. We all agree, like, this is dumb. Schools breed germs. That's just a fact. Screw COVID. We are very much aware that kid gets a cold, a whole school gets a cold. Kid gets a flu, a whole school gets a flu. Lice, this, that, there, whatever wrong goes into that school, comes out of that school, and goes to everybody else's home. And that's why the schools have to send out that letter like, please be aware we are having a case of this. Please make sure you're doing what, right? That whole thing, we've all seen it. We've all read it as parents or as, as kids in the school. We've all dealt with it. Some of y'all still remember scratching up your scalp because you had lice. Most of all who remember that weren't black because we don't really get it like that. But, <laughs> like, you know what I'm saying. So why are we, during a time when everyone's so afraid to be within six feet of each other, why are we even attempting this? It needs to be 100% remote learning. I'm sorry that's the case. It, it just is how it should be. Most jobs that have outsourced capability, right, you don't need to be in office uh, you know, even even if you do need to be in office, they they limit hours, they limit amount of people who can come in. You have to schedule to come in to, to do the paperwork aspect of your stuff, right? If we are thinking about adults and the money that's being moved around in the economy and all this other stuff, and we're providing, you know, remote work for people, making that a thing, companies are transitioning to it. Why are we not doing that for schools? Y you you need these people to become those people. You get what I'm saying, <laughs> like. It just makes sense. So I don't know. Maybe maybe I'm bugging. Maybe it's because I'm not the parent that has to watch the kid all day while this goes on. And I feel for you. But here's here's the two possibilities. You stressed out with your kid at home or you freaking out with your kid in the hospital. That's the sad reality of it. Right? And don't get me wrong. I'm not one of these paranoid COVID people. Right where everything scares me, possible COVID. That I'm not. I'm not one of those. I swam through the worst of it in the hospitals. It's not a big deal and, uh, to me right now, as it was when this really peaked. Is that you? And you see the dead bodies, the whole the ball game. But it's just it's the idea that 
you don't know if it's going to be you on that ventilator, right? That, like, we're literally doing this because we are worrying about the 1% of people in this country, wondering if we're going to be part of that 1%, right? We're normally, we're always talking about 1% of people and rah, 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 they need to give us their wealth. Well, now you have to care about the 1% who needs their health. All right? So there you go. Now, <laughs> I didn't even mean that to rhyme. I just realized that now. <laughs> Um, but yeah, so that's, I mean, that's the reality of it. But there's some other things happening locally that we can talk about. So one, um, for those of you who are having to deal with the remote learning, uh, there's something called Parent University. It's something that's provided by the Department of Ed, and pretty much it's kind of like a course for parents who are stressing over how do they deal with helping their child with the remote learning programs, with having to deal with you know the, the mental aspect of being at home in school and all that nonsense, like how to help your kid get through it, but help you as a parent to do it. You know, not everybody's trained to be, you know, a child psychologist or understands, you know, the internet the same way, whatever. So even parents need, a, you know, a course on how to work this program and help their kids through it. So I think it's a really cool thing. You know, Google it, Parent University, um, and, you know, see how the DOE helps you here in New York, all right? Um, when you do get those moments to take your kids out, especially right now, they're gonna be tons of places trying to do their holiday setup. Uh, over by 23rd Street in the Flatiron District, they have their installation for the Christmas holidays coming up that they keep around until just about Christmas time. So, you know, if you're in the city or you just you know, wanna take a trip into the city, you need to stretch your legs out or whatever, go check that out. It's just a nice little art thing, fun for the family kind of a situation. I think that's, I think that's the hardest part right now, um, anywhere you go. It doesn't matter what state, what city you're in. Um, if you're still a country with COVID issues and COVID numbers that aren't steadily in decline, uh, it's the number of things you can do now, especially now that it's getting colder in certain places. Like, what can we do other than eat at restaurants? And even that is limited to a certain capacity. Nobody wants you in their house because they're of their paranoia. So you can't even get do get-togethers anymore. And I think in some places it's still unlawful to get together with a whole bunch of people. It's it's a very complicated situation, so any little thing that you can do to get out, definitely you want to check your local papers. You uh, you want to go online and actually do a little research. Most cities or community boards will have listings of things that are happening in the area, and you want to watch my show, <laughs> which you already are, so you, you know, step one, already there. Uh, so yeah, so that, you know, that's something that's going on as well. Now, one thing that happened uh is going around the internet again is from a long time ago well not really long it's two years ago there's a news clip from fox news 11 of a <laughs> i guess it was a segment about different foods and like dog food and stuff like that and they have the the anchors not just one anchor but most of the anchors in this clip are eating this like yogurt ice cream thingy with a dog now, normally, I would just post it and say nothing about this, but I posted it on the World's View page, and it's just literally the idea that I know dog lovers and a lot of pet lovers in general, right, the owners, y'all really love your animals. Like, you forget they're not humans. And I've still been seeing clips like this posted online with, like, people, like, all up in their animals' faces and... The animals, like, in their food, and they don't really do anything. They just keep eating it. Look, everybody who does this with their pets, I don't want to hear no complaints about how anything with COVID is handled. Because y'all just do some nasty stuff. Right? And a lot of it, I got to I gotta say, I don't see it with black folk. Like, black folk, the first people to be like, you let that thing lick you? Like, <laughs> you know, a lot of the time. But... Even still, I still I still see some of y'all with the little toy dogs, my brothers and sisters. Y'all y'all really, really need to fix yourself on that one. Um, but yeah, uh, so yeah, don't don't complain about how people handle their COVID needs, mask, no mask. Da, da, da. When you're like making out with your dog and your cat, and you're just eating off of each other, and why are you eating off of a dog who licks his butt? Like I don't care how much Colgate you put in its mouth. It licks his butt on a consistent basis, more consistent than you brush. I'm just putting that out there. 
that I just I had to get that off my chest because I'm, I'm I'm watching this clip and you know I'm seeing some of the the comments, but I'm really just like watching it like are they really doing that? But then I really I I go I want one on some of the meme stuff and everybody knows I'm always finding memes, I'm always finding videos, I'm posting on Instagram and Facebook, and I'm just seeing a lot of this in general with like pet owners. It's like pet owners, y'all need to relax. Y'all need to be way more hygienic. Okay, just be more hygienic because a lot because I hear a lot of them complain like parents about their COVID concerns, and I'm like, no, no, you don't get to pick and choose when you get to be like all anal about stuff. It's not how that works. <laughs> yes, after the kissing their dog. Wow. Okay, you are five years old. I'm gonna get Raiden on you. <laughs> Charles in the peanut gallery back there. Okay, um, but yeah, so uh, we we have some media stuff that I want to get to too. So one is the series called The Expanse, right? It's an Amazon ex series that got really popular. I've tried to get into the show on several occasions, and I feel like it's just such a slow burn; it doesn't hit. Like it never really grasped my attention so much. I was like, "Ooh, I, I want to get involved in the drama." It's just full of drama. And I'm just like, I, I I don't care though. Uh, but for whatever reason, he's got him four seasons, fifth season's out, sixth season confirmed. But for the Expanse fans, next season, season six, that's it, folks. That's the end. So dropping that bomb on you, giving you a year and some change to, like, really let that set in. Uh, I think I needed that for Game of Thrones, and I think that's part of why some people are upset. Like, it didn't have time to, like, this is going to be the end. It turned into this is gonna be the end, and then it was like this is gonna be the end. It's gonna be dope. Like no, they have to find a way to like end it. <laughs> like it's gonna be done, not dope. Done. Different four little words starts with D. <laughs> but yeah, so that that is something. Um, next, there's supposedly a sequel in the works for Gremlins, and they've already confirmed that Gremlins three will not have any CGI. So they're going to keep the kind of like puppeteer kind of thing they had going on. I don't know how I feel about that. I know a lot of fans are excited. They're like, yes, it's going to be a purist movie. What I don't think fans realize is how much graphics matter to them. Now, I think CGIing it is risky because, well, you know, it's not going to look the same and that's going to be the first complaint. That's not how I remember it. Right? But then when they realize how something from the 80s looks in 2020, they're going to be like, uh, I like that? <laughs> like, you know? I I get this all the time when, like, some people say, like, this doesn't hold over, right? And that, you know, anime heads know this all the time when they're just like, yeah, I can't watch something from, like, 1980-something. Those old series just they don't look as good or whatever, especially from these newer fans. There's no appreciation for it, right? Uh, same with like TV shows. A lot of people don't like to watch stuff in black and white because, like, why am I watching in black and white? Meanwhile, it's about the quality of the work, right? But there's no appreciation for it. I feel like a lot of the purest fans, like the the old school fans, the people who grew up within the '80s, who you know who watched through the, in the '90s, there's gonna be some love there. And I still feel, especially more so, the '90s babies born after 1993, uh, they're gonna they're gonna find that they don't like it as much. 20, 30, 40 years later. Um, but for those of you excited, hopefully you stay excited because, like I said, no CGI. So you get what you get. That's been confirmed by the director of the project of Gremlins 3. And this this one's for Kiki. Hi, Kiki. Uh, so BTS snags the first K-pop band Grammy nomination. And why is this so big? Because, honestly, they deserved it. I know a lot of people are like, you say that? Because I'm, I'm not a BTS fan like that. But that last album they dropped has some funky hits. And the English translation and the version, whatever, was was dope. Uh, I'm not the hugest K-pop fan. I'm, I, I, I solely have grown more appreciation for Korean rap music. Um, and I've learned more about how the industry works where it explains why the korean rap music is pretty good um i still would prefer japanese stuff personally but you know what when you hear that a foreign 
project actually gets appeal in a big money market like the U.S., it's nothing but to show love. So shout out to BTS. Congratulations to y'all. And hopefully y'all win it. Because from what I've heard from a lot of music this year, y'all is top of the line for 2020. Then again, it's been a crazy year, 2020. So, you know, it might, might mean more in 2021. <laughs> I'm just going to put it out there. I ain't trying to hate, but yeah, uh, people have been busy. I think <laughs> some, who, somebody wrote a song about a cup this year. That actually, this is the second time. Country Music Ben did it, My Red Cup. You got to hear that song. Trashy song, but it's kind of catchy. Somebody wrote a cup about a cup this year, and I'm like, yeah, that's some, that's some quarantine stuff right there. <laughs> right to talk about a cut and it's a hit on that note we're going to go to our next commercial break when we come back we're going to talk a little bit more news and then we're going to get to what you should and shouldn't skip movie and tv wise charles if you could take us to our next break <laughs> Hey everybody, I'm Will D. I am Javier Luis. I'm Alex Polanco. I'm Apolonia Cruz. And I'm Kelly Cabo. I am Charlie Fo. I am Emmanuel Anzule. Do you know one in four women will experience domestic violence during their lifetime? And domestic violence and abuse can happen to anyone. Regardless of gender, race, or other factors. Two out of three homicide cases are females who were killed by a family member or intimate partner. As domestic violence victims, they face high rates of depression, sleep disturbances, anxiety, flashbacks, and other emotional distresses. And without help, witnesses of domestic violence are more vulnerable to become abusers themselves. Thus continuing the cycle of violence in the next generation. Hello, I'm Charles Aloma. Join the LDM Network in a safe horizon and take a step into changing these facts. So if you are or know someone that is being abused, please call the city domestic hotline at one 800 621 so that is 1-800-621-HOPE. Speak up, speak out, and make a difference. And just know that you don't have to deal with this alone. There is help. how old you are i think earlier today i posted up something i was like you know you're getting old when you can remember waiting each week for a new episode of dragon ball z oh, yeah. yeah right like I, we, <laughs> I was in a group talking with somebody he was like yeah man i remember having to wait each week for the episode so when you know i watched the goku fight versus frieza and then you know eventually a few weeks later you see like trunks pull out the sword and like one shot frieza you're like damn, I remember waiting for that next episode, too. Like, that feels all the way back. Dang, man. And we still talk about it, yeah. Oh, I mean, for those of you who read the manga, it seems like the moral arc is near a conclusion. And then again, Norin Toriyama, you can stretch it out for how long. Uh, but, you know... It, that's nearing a conclusion, and then it's supposed to be the next main arc for the anime post-tournament of power. So we really don't know what the status of Super is going to be within the next year or two, um, which is, is major because it, Moro could be the last thing we ever get. There could be something after Moro. I know we've seen a couple of fan fiction storylines that have caught people's attention. Um, so, it's, I mean, you know, 30 years, 40 years for some uh Dragon Ball is still a major conversation as far as media and entertainment. It's one of Japan's biggest and longest running uh dynasties like series and all of that. Probably probably I I mean I know there are a lot of people who hate on it for various reasons, but um probably their most successful international series of all time. And we're talking video games. They Think about this, folks. There was, there was no new Dragon Ball story for 20 years, right? Official Toriyama written, because a lot of people don't acknowledge GT, despite him being a major editor on the project, but um, for like 20 years, right? And yet, 
they were still able to sell you video game after video game after video game of the same freaking story. How many of us have bought Budokai 1, Budokai 2, Budokai 3, Budokai Tenkaichi, Tenkaichi 2? You know what I'm saying, folks? Like, y'all just rebought a Goku game about everything that happened before Super after they had games that included Super. That's some crazy nonsense to me. That's how much this fandom's gone. Some yeah, some. Uh, I'm telling you, it is hilarious. I'm, I'm at least Xenoverse is like an original Dragon Ball storyline created. You know, whatever. We, we really, we really all bought like seven or eight of the same damn story just for different button combinations. Real talk. They updated the graphics. We got to play Goku's whole life again. Like, really think about that. That's crazy to me. <laughs> Anywho, let's get back on point. So first, uh, the the GSA is saying that they are progressing with transitioning from Trump to Biden. Um, so you know, regardless of all the people talking about Trump's disgraceful, da 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 da, da look, there's the transition's happening. And to point out, today is what November twenty second, right? I think I I I read this originally on the twenty seventh or twenty eighth. And Trump had until the 14th. So now not only is things progressing, they're progressing more than, you know, 20 days ahead of schedule. Than necessary, I should say. Not even schedule, but necessary. Because schedule would have been the day that he lost the election. Let's be real. That's what every other president does. They can see within the first, you know, by the, if there's problems at all, we got to do a recount or anything. By Saturday, it's confirmed. This year, I think it was Saturday or Sunday, we got, like, yeah, you know, we think it's this guy, but he's fighting it. So same difference, okay? Uh, so that that's you know, not, I just want to hear people complaining about it anymore. It's so annoying. Uh, we also got some news from the CDC. They're planning on creating an official announcement where they may reduce COVID quarantine time from 14 days to anywhere between seven to ten, right? I think part of it is that they realize that with the number of people who have been infected or show positive signs or yada, 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 I mean, you know, although it's 1% of people who may have passed, a lot of people have it. So you staying home hasn't really been helping for as long. The other thing is that it's been showing that a lot of people may have it and been asymptomatic. As much as people are like, it's important to get tested, da, 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 that's for us to keep track of it more than the importance of what we're doing. Because most hospitals will tell you if you, uh, you know, and especially a lot of Midwest hospitals who are understaffed are telling you if you don't have symptoms, don't even waste your time coming and getting tested. A lot of people will have this disease and be asymptomatic. You will not have symptoms. Your body will not start breaking down. Da, 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 like It'll just fight it off like you're having a, a really crappy 24 hour cold. Like that's why they're really more focused on the cases of respiratory issues, which are very few and far between. So if you're someone who has a lot of COVID paranoia and concerns, the reality of it is you might be infected already. You just don't know. The scariest part of COVID is that you won't know if you have it. The next scariest part is that if you keep trying to find out, you're going to shut down the same city you stuck doing nothing in. You know what I'm saying? Like the few things that are open, I'm going to close. I'm not telling you not to get tested. I'm just telling you this is what's going to happen. So <laughs> you do better dealing with COVID as if you already have it. And I don't mean necessarily shutting yourself down, but there's certain there's certain things you can do to help with, you know, trying to get rid of it, trying to help it get out your system. Uh, and I suggest doing these things, you know, you know, have more citrus, drink more alcohol, drink more warm liquids. Things like that, right? That'll actually burn it through your body. I told you before, there's a 48-hour congestion period in your throat. That's how a lot of people got antibodies. That's why a lot of people have it with no whatever. Your your best bet is to just act like you have it and just be extra precautious about how you're treating and what you're putting in your system because you, you, you might, I, I would think you probably have it or have had it and now have the antibodies. Like That's a safe bet at this point. Um. So, you know, I mean, unless you're going on an airplane or you feel like you have symptoms, don't go get tested. It's, there's just no point at this point. Like, hospitals get mad. They're just like, go home. Just stay home. If you think you go, stay home. My mother, I mean, you know, she was ill. 
I told her, stay home. Because what happens when you have it, especially during the peak time when she got it, they were putting all the COVID people in the same place. So, I mean, you have all these people feeling unwell with this germ, putting it all up in the same air, and they're stuck together. Like, you know, people, their, their celebrities talked about during their stays, they saw people die around them. You don't want that. You don't need that. Stay at home. If you're not having chest problems, stay at home. Snuffy nose, whatever, stay at home. Treat like the flu. All right. Um, but since we were talking about it, uh, you know, rest in peace, Mayor David Dinkins, who is one of the few black men to run the world's greatest city. Uh, you know, his tenure was when I was very little, so not much that I personally know about the man, but any African American person who has risen in the ranks is an example of where any of us can get to because they fought through adversity. Why can't you? <laughs> you know what I'm saying? <laughs> it's, that, it's that simple. When it, it always helps to see somebody who looks like you, whether you're black, whether you're Latino, whether you're Asian, like succeed in a, in a system that's not built for you. We constantly, you know, one, one issue that always bothers me that a lot of us don't like to talk about is the fact that I don't, I don't think a lot of us fight the same way we used to, you know? They're, they're very much people who go out there and protest and then they do what they got to do. And then there are a lot of people now who just complain. They go on social media and protest or, you know. And we've seen some strides in that, but there's not a lot of people who have that same stone wall to do the sit-ins that happen, you know, during the major civil rights movement in down south Alabama, right? When they know very well they're putting their life on the line, there are not a lot of us in modern era who are going to do the same thing. Um, knowingly. I would say, you know, you might do something and then find out, oh, this is really dangerous. But yeah, so, you know, a lot of power to anyone who's come before and fought those battles that a lot of us now may not have the same willpower to do. So, uh, you know, rest in peace, my friend. And again, you know what really bothers me? Let me, uh, let me, let me do another what hurts me. People who say rest in power. What the hell is that? Rest in power? What, we talking about ghosts? Like, what's wrong with you? Peace. After all that struggle in your life, rest peacefully for eternity. No more stress. Rest in power. Está loca. What the fuck? <laughs> like, it gets me so mad. Every time I rest in power, I'm up. No. We're not all angry black people up in Harlem. Like, we don't, we don't need that. Yeah, you know, like, it's, suppo it's supposed to be about that eternal peace. Hopefully you finally reach, because that's, uh, I mean, maybe it's just me, but that's what we all look for, that, that peace that we can't get when we have to do the daily struggle. You know, you, you did what you had to do is what we're saying. You did what you had to do. You made it. You lived. You brought life. You, you know, you, you, and I, I don't mean necessarily mean you had kids. I mean, you, you know, you brought your life. You brought life to others. You brought yourself. You, you, you did something special that, you know, you made you relevant. You get what I'm saying? True. He didn't have a lot of drama. Not, not that was in the media like that. But put it to you that way. You know, everybody, everybody. We're talking politicians. Let's let's be real. But no, he he didn't he didn't have the major. He wasn't Rudy Giuliani. I'm gonna just leave it at that. That's bad. That's real. Shots fired. Shots fired. Come on, people. I, I'm telling you, I feel like I'm too old for this generation. That's sad, man. I'm not even 30 yet. That's, that's crazy. All right. But let's get to the stuff that Charles likes me to get to. Got the movies and the shows. So first, we have a movie that recently dropped on Netflix called Hard Kill. And boy, did it kill my time hard. This was, I mean, let, let's, let's be honest. I see Bruce Willis and something, and I'm like, I'll give it a watch, right? That's that's just how that works, right? Sometimes it's just it's not worth it. It's, it's, this was one of those times. I realized maybe in the first minute what this was going to be when the lead star of this action movie was someone I remember being a kind of soft leading male on an NBC soap opera called Passions. And I was like, aw damn, they brought little Miguel 
to be an action hero. This is going to be a long movie. <laughs> and it was. It really was. I think the other familiar face in that cast used to be a redheaded wrestler and one of the stars on Total Divas, if I'm not mistaken. Uh, yeah, that this this might as well have been a WWE. You know, I can't even say that because they've actually had a couple of good movies that, yeah, this was no slight. This was the only redeeming factor is stuff blows up. When Bruce Willis is in a movie and stuff blows up, I like that. <laughs> so there we go. I give, I got to give it a two out of five just because stuff blew up. Um, Next from Netflix is a movie called The Beast, right? Or that's the English translation. This is actually originally an Italian movie. So what this movie felt like while watching it was a more dramatized version of Taken. It was less of a corny action flick and more of like they really try to turn it into a dramatic cinematic man who's hunting back, you know, the people who kidnapped his family member, yada, yada. It's a slow burn with some action sequences and a storyline that gets way more convoluted than what they give you in the trailer. And yet, it's somehow grasped by entertainment. I think you should give it a shot if you like dramas. It, it, this, is, this isn't an action movie, and it may market itself as an action movie, but this is not an action movie. It's an Italian action movie, which means it's an American drama. <laughs> right. So I give it a three out of five. I feel like if you go into it thinking, because a lot of the story premise sounds a lot like Taken. No, it's it's a drama. It's a bloody drama. Three out of five. Take a chance on it. It's it's not bad, but it's not great. It it doesn't meet the American expectation. Put it to you that way. But as a you know, if you hold it for what it is, it's a pretty good movie. Um, also from Netflix, I got through the next two seasons of What Mirth, and I'm like four episodes away from finishing season six. Uh, season four and five, they are good. I give them both four out of fives. The issue that I have with these seasons is simply that some of the storyline gets convoluted because actors' contracts were up. There wasn't too much to do with them. Like, where I'm currently at in the story... Somebody's supposed to be having a baby, and I feel like the whole thing about that just, like, disappeared out of nowhere. Like, I'm still sitting here like, so, is she knocked up? Is she not knocked up? Like, did we forget this happened? But all in all, I mean, the, the ending of each one of these seasons is is awesome, right? Frankie is totally like the epitome of, of what a bad A is, right? Love her, probably the best character. No, she's the second best character the series had. The best character in this, I, it's been a long time since I've met a TV villain who's like really good. Um, she is the bad guy version of James Spader's character on the blacklist, essentially. She's just, I mean, calculating every move, setting up, Every situation, manipulating anyone and everything. It's when she no longer has control that she's even scarier. Because like how she how she makes sure to get everything back in her grasp. This woman is crazy, and I love it. And I love this the writers of this series for developing someone so awesome for a TV show. This is movie quality character work for a TV show. It's great. I love it. This is awesome. Ferguson, one of the best TV characters of all time. And I, I don't say that lightly at all. That's brilliant. I, brilliant. I can't give away too much without, like, ruining some of the storyline. And I don't want to do that for you. This is this series is definitely a must-watch. Wentworth, Netflix, you got to – I'm telling you, I cannot stop watching it. Like, something important has to be going down for me to, to, to pull this phone from my face. Like, real, real talk. Either that or, like, I'm watching too many other series to catch up on that it's like, I need to give one with my entire attention. I have to put you away for now. You know, I don't want to watch nothing else when I'm watching it. It's great. And I normally have four or five things playing at the same time. That's, that's my idea. Like, I talk to you about certain shows. You do not realize how many shows and anime series and stuff like that I'm watching over the course of the week while doing other things. It's, it's kind of scary. Uh, <laughs> but I've been 
trying to, to look at some movie movies, right? And so because I can't market to you, you know, rightfully about illegal torrents, I had to find a way to watch them legally for you. Okay, I not now. Am I saying I watch them legally? No, I'm saying I had to find a way to watch them legally for you. So, if you go on Vudu, V U D U, a lot of the the most recent movies to hit theaters, whether it be here in America or somewhere else, um, this this is a pretty good site to get it for. The movies are normally, you know, I think you might need a five or six dollars something for a membership. And honestly, for the selection that you get, especially if you like classic stuff or you like stuff that's, you know, if, if you like B stuff, this uh, these guys have like a whole bunch of it, a, a lot of B, B stuff, a lot of stuff that would have been straight to DVD if people still watch DVDs like that. Um, yeah, they have a lot of those. Um, then they have a lot of classic movies for free. They have a lot of the updates on what's hitting theaters for, for like five bucks um, to rent, maybe 10 bucks to own, which is still beating stores by how much? It's it's good enough where I, I feel safe saying watch these things on Voodoo. So first is a series that I you know, I like to give the B stuff a try. It's something called The Fighting Preacher. Now the title suggests that there will be a preacher doing fighting. I'm expecting a couple of moments of the preacher preaching. And it's really like it was nothing like what I was expecting. And I don't mean that in a good way. I mean, they, there were a couple of boxing matches, right? We're talking about, you know, uh, America when Mormons are first really becoming to sprout in middle America, right? Um, and that's what a lot of the movie's about, like a Mormon living in a town where they don't like Mormons because they're Mormons, right? They don't like them because they're polygamists. They don't like them because they don't really drink. They don't like them for all the dumb things that a redneck wouldn't like anybody for anything. Uh, <laughs> so, I mean, I hate to say it, but it's true. Um, and not to say all people are rednecks. I'm just, in this movie, yes, yes, they are. They are... They're rednecks. Um, not necessarily hillbillies, but they're rednecks. Um, and it's about this Mormon preacher who, you know, is trying to figure out how to fit in, fit in town. So he kind of, you know, impresses people with the fact that he's a great boxer. Um, but it, they don't really take to him for being a great fighter. They just know to respect him because he's a great fighter and how him and his family adjust to the small town. Like I said, I expected some fighting. I expected, you know, a couple of things with maybe a sermon here and there. But it really turned to an entire story of family. This is the type of movie for someone who, like, actually wants to watch the Hallmark Network. That's what this, this movie is for. If you, if you turn on your TV to watch the Hallmark Network, if you turn on your TV to watch any of those Christian stations, this movie is for you. For the rest of us... No. I give it a two out of five because this has a clear-cut market, not even because of any entertainment value. The fights are corny because it's like 1,800 um, boxing. Like, yeah, whatever. Um, you know, the storyline is very pre simple and predictable dialogue and yada, yada, yada. There's nothing very unique about this movie. It is perfect for the Hallmark Network. That is it. Uh, next is a movie that I saw a trailer for during a UFC fight, and I'm glad I did. It's called Chick Fight. Literally, that's the name of it. And it's about a female fight club. Now, there's a lot of plot holes in this movie. And I'm talking about they're so bad that the characters actually talk about the plot holes in the movie because they realized they had to address it at some point. Uh... But I couldn't, I couldn't stop watching. It was funny. It was corny, but it was funny. The fights were cool. Bella Thorne makes for like that, you know, high school cheerleader ice queen that you hate so well. So she does it so well. Um, I I really did want to punch her in the face a couple of times. It was it was a good movie. I I you know if you liked Mean Girls, if if you like you know corny comedies. This is a movie with Alec Baldwin being a boxing coach and a drunk. Like, it's, it's, it writes itself. It's a very simple storyline, but it was a lot of fun. It really was. I suggest watching Chick Fight. I give it a 3.5 out of 5. You got you to gotta know when something is a, is a bad movie, right? But it's so bad, it's good.
it's not like a B movie where it's just so corny. You got to enjoy it for what it is. Like you can see the low production value and laugh about seeing the cameraman in the background. It's not that bad. That's not what I'm getting at. But it's it's a movie called Chick Fight, where they like the most ridiculous premise is caused for the girl to enter the underground fight league, and she has to try and fight her way to the top. Very simple, right? But tons of laughs along the way, and I suggest it. It's, it is a fun movie. I was really surprised by how much I liked it. Um, next, that's something that also recently dropped, New Mutants was recently in theaters, and a lot of us here in New York didn't get a chance to go to theaters for it. Thank you, de Blasio. Um, but yeah, so I watched it, and I was even more mad that this wasn't a TV series. So New Mutants was originally dropped to, or was supposed to be like a Hulu TV series when they were talking about it. Then they decided to turn into a movie project. Yeah, we saw what happened when they did the reverse of that. I think Marvel, if you have any idea of what a series should be initially, stick to it. Just stick to it. This movie felt so rushed. It felt so rushed. And there was a lot of potential there. I don't know why they forced that particular love story. Didn't need it. Like, they literally, there was no, it did not help progress the story at all. At all, to put that in there. Uh, even, like, even the guy who can turn on fire, it made more sense for him to have a moment to talk about him heating up. You get what I'm saying? But the other one, yeah. Anywho, uh, I, I mean, and I really say that because we're talking about, like, young teenage kids, and also the likelihood that one from this reserve who doesn't know much about people and is stuck about her father would, you know. Uh, yeah, just that was, just felt so Hollywood, like, forcing it down your throat. That really annoyed me. Uh, I got to give this a three out of five, though, because I still see so much potential with what they could do with this. But it would need to turn into a TV series. This needs to be a TV series. Point blank, period. Now, last from the new movies is Iron Mask. Jackie Chan, Arnold Schwarzenegger. There's, uh, I mean, this is this movie is very Chinese. So there is a dragon involved. <laughs> I hate to say, it, but like, yeah, we know like Chinese kung fu flicks that are very Chinese have something mythical added to them or about some ancient things. So this is throwback to like the this 16, 17, maybe eighteen hundreds. I don't know. This is a throwback. The there's a British prison in China. Jackie Chan's in, in locked up in the cage. By the end of the movie, Jackie Chan is like somehow controlling an ancient dragon and then loses complete control of it to um 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 I don't know, a medallion or something. I don't know. The story doesn't even follow them after like the first twenty minutes, it feels like. It, it feels like it follows everybody else, but the production value is also going to be surprising when you hear Jackie Chan and Arnold Schwarzenegger in a movie. It's a very Asian movie, and I think that because I had such Hollywood expectations, it kind of felt a bit flat for me. So to redeem myself, I want to go back and see if there is a kung fu movie that could like hold up for me from when I first watched it. So I not only watched one, but I watched, I watched Tai Chi Zero and Tai Chi Hero, and they still hold up. Zero better than Hero because sequels normally aren't as good. But they're still really fun, and there's a high comedic value to them. It's just a lot more entertaining. This Jackie Chan movie, I got to give it a three out of five just because there's like certain action sequences that are dope. But all in all, it's just a very confusing film that started off talking about a dragon tear and tease. Like, I'm telling you, bro, don't. I, I want to say take a chance on it out of respect for, for Jackie and Arnold, but like, if you skip it, you ain't missing out. It's convoluted. Um, just some cool kung fu stuff. That's what you watch this for. All right? Now, before we go, we're going to do our fans of the week real quick. So, Charles, you have those up? All right. So, uh, first we have Norm Takani, right, from Facebook. All right? So, shout out to him. Thank you for being a good follower this week. Next, we have Nessan Yanek from Instagram. Charles, we know she's thick. You say it every time she wins this. The girl is bad. I know. She's just too far away. Uh, but, yes, thanks to you. And then Bufa Ayo, who's been a fan and follower 
for the past year or so. You know, we talk every now and again, so shout out to you, bro. Hope you're staying safe in China. But our picture of the week is one that I wanted to get to, especially with all this dang school stuff being talked about. So it's a picture from Harry Potter. And uh, we got Neville Longbottom saying, I just realized that never is a contraction of not ever. You got Harry going, and blush is a contraction of blood rush. But Ron steals the cake with, and studying is a contraction for of student dying. And when you really think about it, that's how a lot of people feel when they're in school. Because, man, is this stressful. On that note, I'm Will D, and we will catch you guys next time. <laughs>